So can anybody out there think of a better name for a fragrance to represent how most of us have been feeling during this quarantine? Sloth? Today I'm going to be discussing Sloth by Zoologist. Make sure to stay tuned. So welcome back everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be talking about Sloth by Zoologist. Uh, this is a bottle that was sent to me for review. I always like to disclose that. So if you feel as though I cannot remain unbiased during the course of this review, feel free to click away. I personally don't mind. So this particular fragrance is one that I was looking forward to. I had visited Perfumology back in February or something like that. And Nir Guy, who is the owner of Perfumology, told me about this fragrance. And I was like, oh man, I'm really excited to see what this fragrance is all about and obviously getting it in the mail spraying it on actually getting to experience the full thing um, it really helps to put things in perspective much more than just reading a detailed note breakdown online but this one is certainly a really interesting fragrance it has notes of acai berry and chamomile violet jasmine hay frankincense myrrh vanilla tonka bean just from some of the notes that i'm remembering and for those of you who are not familiar with what zoologist does is they will create fragrances that are inspired by different animals or the habitats of these animals. And so a sloth is known for sleeping most of the day, being one of the more lazy animals out there. I, I know somebody's probably going to correct me and say, no, they're not lazy. That's just how they act. Or I didn't do too much research into the animal itself, but I did do a bit of research into the fragrance. So I'm excited to tell you what I get from the smell. Let's start things off with the presentation. So the box for the fragrance just has this graphic here on the front. I love these sort of portrait style uh, pictures that are found on all zoologist boxes. And the box opens up with a magnetic flap on the right. And you can see the silhouette of the bottle here on the right. And then on the left, you have a couple paragraph blurb on the fragrance itself. And feel free to pause your screen if you want to read it or take a closer look at the notes. The spine of the box has the zoologist logo on it. The back of the box just has the made in information on it as well as the UPC. The bottle for this fragrance, of course, is very similar to other zoologist bottles that you may have seen in the past. And the top of the cap just has the zoologist logo engraved into it. And the liquid for this fragrance is quite dark so I would just say don't spray on clothing especially lightly colored clothing the cap for this fragrance does not click into place but it's a very snug fit so you can pick it up from the cap and the distribution on the atomizer is nice and wide let's continue with the smell so as soon as this fragrance opens up the first thing that I got is beeswax and I think that might be because I was also reminded a little bit of B, which is another fragrance that was released recently, actually late 2019 by Zoologist. And I did get something in here that was a bit sweet. I know a lot of that sweetness could be on account of the beeswax, but it can also be on account of the vanilla and the tonka bean that is used in the base as well. And the beeswax in here, I think, is not as powdery. It's not as dense. It's not as thick and viscous as it is in B. And in this fragrance, it really plays only a supporting role. In the opening of this fragrance, however, you are going to get this chamomile note, which is listed as a top note. And my melatonin levels are going up already. I mean, I was drinking chamomile, you know, very much so when I was a kid. And uh, especially when I lived in Greece, it's called chamomili. And I would have it practically every single night. I guess my mother just wanted me to uh, go to sleep for the day. But um, I love that combination of that really soothing, calming, herbal, aromatic chamomile that is found in the opening, as well as this really nice sort of s subtly sweet heart that is also coming across smelling a little bit damp. And I think that that moist or that damp quality is on account of either the hay, which yes, we've seen in some other fragrances and it has become a sort of characteristic note that sort of defines a lot of the fragrances that it's found in, but I don't think that it does with this particular fragrance. I think the hay really creates this, or it kind of extends that calming sort of meditative vibe well into the base of the fragrance. So where in the open you kind of have like this chamomile, you have the violet, which can also come across smelling very smooth. And then in the mid, you also have some florals in there. There's actually a floral that I thought I smelled osmanthus. When I smell this one, there's just something about this one that is kind of reminding me of the smell of osmanthus, but I looked at the note breakdown and it's not in here. So I guess I was wrong. But in the base, you are gonna get this sort of frankincense and myrrh. It's not smoky. 
by any means and it's not overly resinous you know frankincense has a very sort of characteristic smell if you've tried fragrances like full incense by montal cardinal by healy there's even a sere trudon fragrance that contains a lot of frankincense you kind of have an idea of what it smells like i don't get any of that in this fragrance so that's another thing that leads me to suspect that it's really playing more of a supporting role i would venture to say that i'm able to pick up more on the myrrh than i am the frankincense that's in here and the sweetness of it it almost you know that honey and myrrh combination is almost kind of putting me in the mindset of like a Jubilation 25 by Amouage. But I don't know if they're using a Poppinax necessarily. So I'm not too informed on the variety of myrrh that's used in here. But that acai berry with the honey and the myrrh, it's kind of putting me in the mindset of like a Jubilation 25, but it's such a different fragrance. I mean, you really have to get your nose on it to see the difference. What I like the most about this fragrance is that there's just something about the combination of the ingredients. It smells a little furry. It smells kind of calm and tranquil. And so it's putting you in the mindset of a sloth, but I think it's also paying homage to like the diet of the animal and the habitat of the animal. So I'm sure there was a lot of thought that went on behind the scenes that I'm not necessarily privy to. And I know as a creative director, Victor Wong, he makes sure to cross all of his T's and dot all of his I's. So there's no doubt in my mind that he did play, pay complete attention to all of these things. And so I'm really happy to have this one in my collection. And I wanna thank you so much, Victor, for sending this to me. And and I'm also looking forward to reviewing the new 2020 version of Bat and uh, maybe I'll possibly even do a comparison of the two on my channel as well if time permits but thanks again and let's finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell super unique fragrance when it comes to the house of zoologists what you're going to get are some of the most unique fragrances that the industry has smelled. And I think that that's because of the perfumers that he curates. I think that's because of the concept of the brand. I think that's because of the mood boards that he submits as a brief. It really inspires creativity. And I think he's really giving a lot of, um, a lot of free reign over the perfumers when it comes to creating the fragrances in the sense that you know, he's willing to entertain, as far as I'm given understand, he's willing to entertain, you know, many different expressions until he finds one that he's fully satisfied with. And uh, this one is a great fragrance. Overall smell, I don't think it's challenging. You know, I think this is the type of fragrance where as long as you apply kind of conservatively, uh, you're just gonna smell really good. I think there are other fragrances out there that could be a bit more animalic. You know, think of fragrances like Civet, even though that one comes across smelling very classy and it kind of, uh, you know, harkens back to some of the older days of perfumery. But fragrances, I suppose, like the original formulation of Beaver or Hyrax, I think those fragrances can come across smelling a little bit animalic. This one, of course, this is a 100% vegetarian brand. They don't use any animal ingredients, but you know, it does contain the beeswax. So I suppose that in combination with whatever musks may be used in this fragrance, those are like the only um, animalic notes that are used in here. But even then, you know, um, I, I, you know, I know that no animals were harmed in the making of this product or anything like that. So uh, overall smell, very unique. I personally enjoy the way that it smells. Longevity on this one is 10 plus hours. It is one of the better performing zoologist fragrances. A lot of them seem to perform very, very well. And I would imagine that's because of the concentration, the ingredients that are used in here. And I know a lot of them are independently made. Um, I know Squid was a bit of a deviation because he worked with a major company uh, for that one. And perhaps that was the one that I don't think gave me the most spectacular longevity. Still lasted a decent amount on my skin, but there is no qualm in, in terms of longevity for this fragrance. The projection for this fragrance will project and radiate with beyond an arm's length for the first two and a half to three hours. It becomes an elbows length scent at like the six hour mark. And it doesn't become a skin scent until about the eight 
to nine hour mark. So I got about 10 hours longevity when I did try this one on skin. And I think that that's superb given the price that you're paying and the quality. Versatility on this one, I just think because of how it's constructed, the notes that are used in here, it's a bit more of a special occasion fragrance. So it's not necessarily one that I see most people wearing casually, um, but honestly wear perfume whenever you want, right? These are just recommendations. I think that this is better suited for somebody who's a bit older and a bit more mature. Um, I don't necessarily see a high school student wearing this and I think it's totally unisex. And in terms of seasons, I can see somebody pulling it off in the spring. I think it might be just a tad bit overwhelming in the summertime. But like I said, there are some uh, notes in here that do clean it up a bit. You know, the chamomile and the violet and whatnot. So um, again, just recommendations, wear what you want, when you want, no matter who you are. And then the presentation, I also really enjoy. So my final verdict for this fragrance is, I think it's another solid addition to the zoologist lineup. I think in terms of the expression of this particular animal, uh, Victor Wong and Prim Lomros from, uh, and I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing the name, but I think the two did a fantastic job when composing this fragrance. I'm very proud of you guys, and I'm excited to see what's next in line. So. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. That was my review of Sloth by Zoologist. If you own or have tried this fragrance, please let me know what you think. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Also, if you are new to this channel and you took something of value from this video, I would really appreciate it if you could support this channel by subscribing to it. All you need to do is click that red button in the corner. And also please make sure to enable notifications by clicking on the bell icon. This way, whenever I do upload future fragrance related content, it'll get delivered straight to your feed. You never need to worry about missing any of my future uploads. Thanks again for watching. Love you all. See you next time. Bye.